evening parents and welcome to the very first webinar in our back to school series. After a wait of almost 18 months, we are really excited to be opening our preschool and daycare centers across the country. In fact, just this Monday, we opened the doors of one of our Hyderabad and Chennai centers. At Clay, your child's safety has always been of paramount importance to us and even more so now. As we plan a phase-wise reopening of our centers, subject to the government go-ahead, we are sure you may have many questions regarding the health and safety of your child when they get back to school. And who better to answer them than our CEO, A.K. Shrikant, fondly known as A.K. But before I hand the session over to A.K., here's a short walkthrough video of one of our centers. Through this video, you will get to see some of the safety processes that we have in place to safely welcome your children back. The video will also address some concerns that you may have around the transition of your child from home to school. Namaste. Namaste, sir. 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 Tell them what we've been doing about, you know, safety precautions that we're taking, what the procedures are, you know, today, given all that we're going through. I see that you've sanitized your hands. That's the first step before entering the center. Next, we conduct a temperature check and make sure you have your mask on. Your temperature today is 96.5 and you're good to go. Your temperature record for the last seven days is already with us and only parents with this information logged in are allowed to access the center. Following that, we will have you seated here to fill the self-declaration form, which has all the details for contact tracing purpose. Beyond this point, parents are not allowed inside the center for the safety of the children. Seba here is our health and safety officer. She is in charge of 100% compliance to all safety norms that we've put up in place in our center. And we have a health and safety officer dedicated to each sensor who's responsible for the same. So at this point, uh, perhaps Seema can take us through the sensor and uh, let us know what are the precautions that she's put into place so that all of us are safe. The parents, the children, and of course the staff as well. Hi Seema, so good to see you again. Hello AK, great to see you at the yeah, center. Yeah, after a long time, right? Absolutely. Long time. Our toys and frequently accessed areas will be sanitized regularly. On the floor, you can see physical distancing markers to help the staff and children distance themselves. Children are trained to wash their hands frequently and they will also follow staggered meal times to have the food they have brought in from home. Most importantly, all of our staff are 100% vaccinated and will wear protective gear mask, gloves, aprons, for the safety of the children. We recommend that the visitors and parents be fully vaccinated as well. However, if one is vaccinated with one dose and due for dose two, they must share the schedule for the second dose. This is the clay classroom. This is where all the magic happens. This is the place that children have been waiting for so long to get back to. And finally, we've reached a place where we are here. Now, as parents, I'm sure there's a lot of concerns you may have about, you know, how the child is going to readjust, how the child is going to settle down into this place after having stayed at home for the last 18 months. So I have the best possible person to answer and address those kinds of queries to you. And the best person to answer these queries would be the class teacher here, Priya. Priya has been with us for, what, three years now, Priya, yes, since you've been yes. with us? Must be excited about the fact that children are going to come back. Very much. We are eagerly waiting for them. So Priya, this would be an excellent time for you to tell our parents how exactly are we going to make the settling in process easy and simple for the children coming back. Definitely, AK. And that is a very valid concern. It's going to be an overwhelming experience for children to come into the center, especially if they have never attended school or daycare in the past. 
So the first three days will be tough and the Monday after a weekend, parents will see their children unsettled all over again. So to ensure the little ones seamlessly adjust, the settling in weeks will have a healthy mix of structured and unstructured activities to engage children in a fun learning way. We will start with reduced timings and gradually increase the same to make children familiar with the environment and people around. The most important aspect is cooperation from parents to help the child follow a routine, encourage them to trust their teachers and finally leave their children here even if they make a fuss. Rest assured, they are in safe loving hands. That's so true. Our staff here is so excited to have the children back and I'm confident that they have the complete capability of taking care of the children when they're back here and taking care of any and every exigency that can come up in the way. And we know that children have been missing out on all this on school for the last 18 months. It's time we gave them back their future. And what better place to do that than right here? Hello, hello all, hello all participants, parents. It's so lovely to um, see you all um, come back on this uh, momentous occasion where we're hoping that we'll be able to start back soon. This is a presentation that we've put together um, so that we answer all the health and safety precautionary measures that we're taking at our schools so that your children can, you know, have a safe passage back. And um, this is the first in a series of webinars. We're gonna have more. Uh, we're gonna speak about, um, you know, how, how can the children readjust to schooling life after missing out on it for so long? And I mean, physical schools. Uh, we have help sessions for parents, uh, take them through the stress that they're going through at their workplaces and with their children's future. But more of that in a bit. First, I'd like to take you all through a presentation that we've put together. Um, which will basically elaborate beyond the video on what we're doing at the schools, post which we'll open it up for questions. Um, may I request for the presentation to be put up, please? Thank you. Thank you. At play, safety has been the most important parameter for a very long time now. Um, this is not the this is not something that we've developed over the pandemic, even pre-pandemic days health and safety at our um, centers used to be our prime focus. And to that extent, we are led by a whole health and safety team, uh, which is present across our campuses. So in a sense, to bring children back to schools, it's a two-way street, right? There are a lot of procedures we'll put into place, but we also need the help of our parents to be able to pull this off so that our children can be safe, be healthy. And I'll start off with what you could do to help us through these times, right? So seven days before the reopening of the center, we request you to please monitor and record your temperatures and that of your children. Uh, this is very critical so that all children on campus when they come back are safe. Now, on a daily basis, we would be recording the temperature of the child when she or he enters the center. And the same is true of our staff as well. All of them would be going through the same health precautions. Hand washing. Now, there is, that is probably the single easiest way of, you know, keeping ourselves safe, frequently wash hands. And so, you know, we would be guiding your child to sanitize their hands um, at the entrance and throughout the day, several times a day, they'll have to wash their hands which I think is something maybe if you could acclimatize them to this fact, um, it would be easier on them once they come back. And of course, because physical distancing is going to be important. Now, on physical distancing, let me assure you, at Clay, we in any case had one of the best space per child available. The government of India states that it should be 10 square feet a child. Most of the European and American unions place it somewhere between 20 and 30. At, at our peak times, we still had 45 square feet per child. So social distancing, given the size of our classrooms and of our school premises, 
would not be a problem. However, we would probably ramp it up to 100% over a period of time. It's not like we are likely to start off with full capacity. In order to help us do that, you could also send a placemat for your child with your child's name on it so that, you know, we dedicate it to your child and, you know, the, the child mats are not missed around. Hence, we ask you to write the name on it. Can you move to the next slide, please? All right. Now, food policy, and this is a very important one to follow. Now, traditionally in the past, there have been some parents who've sent lunch or, and um, eats from the house. Right now, we would not be serving any food from our place. We would not be uh, cooking or serving lunch or breakfast or any of those items. We request you to please send home cooked food and water. Uh, please try to send finger food. Um, you know, that's been cut into pieces already. We'll, we would probably end up encouraging the children to eat with a spoon and avoid eating with bare hands because, you know, children being children, of course, we'll sanitize their hands several times a day. But uh, just to be, uh, you know, even more precautionary, I would request you to please um, send food that can be easily eaten with a spoon and avoid feeding by bare hands. And of course, please label the lunch boxes and the water bottles so that we can prevent swapping of the same between children so that, uh, you know, we are able to control this a little better. Um, unfortunately, at this current moment, we would not be able to provide transport to take your child to the center. They would request the parents to please, um, you know, pick up and drop off the child to the center. Of course, once things improve, once things change and change for the better, we would certainly be hopeful of starting off both on food and transport. Do remember that we've got some exciting news from the government sometime earlier this month where they mentioned that uh, there would be a vaccine possibly available for age groups of two onwards. And this is gonna happen sometime early next year. So once we get the whole population vaccinated, I think things would be a lot easier, but till then we'll have to take every possible precaution so that your child is safe. Next slide, please. Um, from the location or from your home to the center, uh, it would be good if they could wear a mask. However, inside the classroom, uh, we leave it to the discretion of the parents whether they want their children to wear masks or not. Now, this is a topic that's been debated quite a bit. WHO and UNICEF have advised that children should not be required to wear masks. Um, one of the critical things about masks is children tend to take them off sometimes. They tend to... Um, you know, leave it in certain places that could infect the masks themselves. So there's always that risk of more contamination because of a mask in this age group that we are dealing with, right? So um, we would leave that discretion to you. Um, we've seen wearing of masks create hygiene issues with children, especially in other countries. Um, so uh, I think this is a topic up for debate. We would think that if they did not wear a mask inside the class, it should still be okay. Vaccinations. Now, all our center staff will be vaccinated, uh, would have had both the shots, and the evidence of which would be available with the center director in case any of you would like to go through the file. It's available for you to see. Now, as far as the parents of the child, we would, I mean, ideally, we would love it if both parents are fully vaccinated or have at least completed one dose and have a schedule for the second dose. Again, uh, our only reason for demanding this is because we've got a whole set of children there and we would like to keep everybody as safe as possible, which is why we uh, request this of you. Next slide, please. Now comes the most important part. So we've taken all precautions, we've, we've sanitized the place, we've made sure children wash their hands frequently, we've maintained temperature records, we've got vaccinated staff. Even so, there could be a chance that, you know, COVID instances come about in the school. So I'm gonna talk about three scenarios here and what our response mechanism is going to be in each of these places. So scenario one, let's assume a child uh, or a staff member shows a flu-like symptom during the day inside the center. Now, the first thing we do is we have a dedicated sick room where we will isolate the child or the staff member until uh, you know the child can get picked up from the center. Now, we have COVID-19 safety kits available 
inside our um, uh, school premises, which include basic medications. We have masks, gloves, sanitizers. We will inform you immediately about the situation that your child is showing flu-like symptoms and would request for an immediate pickup. Now, you could monitor the case for three days. Typically, uh, you would want to do an RT-PCR test immediately as soon as you um, do it in three days time. If you've got a negative RT-PCR test and if it seems like it's not COVID, it's just some kind of cold or you know, flu related um, symptoms not related to COVID, then please wait till the child is free of the symptoms and you can send the child back to school, right? That's scenario one. Child tests has COVID, uh, has flu-like symptoms, which on a test proves that it is not COVID. Could you move to the next slide, please? Scenario two, it is COVID. You waited three days, you've done the RT-PCR test and we find that it is COVID. Now there's two instances here. One, is there only one case or are there multiple cases that are developing in the school? Let's assume for a moment that there is only one case. In which case, we shall close down the center for five days so that we can observe all the other children to make sure that it was not, you know, it's not spread throughout the system. If there are no other cases reported, we will open back the school in five days time. The affected individual, of course, can come back once they've completely recovered with a negative COVID-19 test, right? And needless to say, we would be disinfecting the whole premises. And this would be done by an external agency, which is well equipped with, uh, you know, sanitization for COVID. Now, the scenario two is, the scenario three rather, is that there are multiple cases. What do we define as a multiple case? If there are more than two or more cases reported in the same center within three days, meaning within three days, if we end up having more than two cases, we would declare that as multiple cases. Again, the protocol would be the same, except that in this case, the center would go into a quarantine of two weeks. Communication would go out to all parents regarding the outbreak. And obviously we will um, make sure that everyone who has come in close contact with the individual or individuals would, uh, we would request them to home isolate till the point that they can safely say that there are no symptoms, there is no COVID, right? Now, again, in case the child has, you know, whenever the child is ready to come back or the staff member is ready to come back, we would require a negative test result. And of course, again, the disinfection of the center would be conducted by an external pest control agency who is certified to do the same. Now, in scenarios two and three, the children could continue to take their online classes, which would continue uh, alongside our physical schools. Um, so it's not like they would miss out on education per se, especially those that are hale and healthy. They can continue with our online sessions till the time that we open up schools and come back there again. Next slide, please. So ensuring that the child's transition to physical classrooms, it's, it's not a joke. I mean, it's something huge we are attempting. We are doing this after you know, almost 18 months of closure. And uh, it requires a lot. It requires health and safety measures. It requires measures in terms of what do we do? What is our response mechanism? How quickly do we act on it? And how quickly do we bring life back to normal for our little ones? Now, in the states of Tamil Nadu and Telangana, we are currently allowed to open, open creches. And in Tamil Nadu, it's open creches, not play schools. We expect that the other states we are present in should be following suit very shortly. So I know there's a Diwali holidays coming up shortly, but beyond that, we see that most of these states would start allowing to open up uh, schools and as you know many officers have also started coming back to work these days and you would probably find that we are ready to help you out when that time arrives now in case of the centers which are in states where we are open you can come in talk to us take a center walk through and take your admissions for those of you who are in states where we still don't have any notification of opening from the government um, we expect it to happen very shortly. You could actually pre-book your seats in our schools at a, a, at a very nominal 4999 price. You could pre-book it. And as soon as the school opens, we will notify you well in advance and you can come back to the center 
um, that we open up. Now, would we open up all centers in the city at the same time? Possibly not. We would open them in a staggered fashion over a period of time, depending on how many of you want to come back and at what intervals, right? Um, so while we'll open centers that are most, you know, conducive to all parents at large, we'll gradually start opening up the other centers as well. So the cities of Hyderabad and Chennai would see all these schools opening up over the next, you know, six to eight weeks. They've already opened two. We'll see them opening up shortly. Um, and for the other states, I wait for the governmental uh, regulations to tell us that we can start. And the minute we hear that, we will be ready to go on. Um, in a nutshell, this is what we're doing. Now, it sounds very simple. I know it's, um, it's a heavy task. It's a heavy task from your ends to have, you know, children who've been there for 18 months in the house, uh, to have them in the mode or in the frame of mind to come back to school. Uh, for you as parents to go through the, um, go through the, you know, tensions of how is this going to work out? So the session we are having today is really only the first in a few that we've planned. My colleagues will be conducting further sessions where we'll take you through how are we going to transition your school, you know, child from online school to physical school? Um, how are we going to take care of the fact, how are they going to, how are we going to help them adjust to the new environment? How are we going to adjust you to the new environment? And for some time, we'd probably see an on off situation. We probably see that everything is going well, and then there's a case and maybe we shut down for some time. We open up, there might be, you know, uh, God forbid, there's another case happening, another wave happening. But if that happens, we are equipped to continue your child's education. Our online programs and our care at home programs will continue to function exactly as they are doing now with the curriculum synced in all cases. So your child will not miss out on anything, right? Um, on this note, I would actually like to hear from the parents because um, I'm sure while some of your questions would have been answered through the video and through the presentation uh, that I just put up, I would be delighted to listen to your questions um, and possibly try to answer them. Uh, I would request you to please put your questions on the chat box of this uh, browser. And uh, Divya, if I may please request you to uh, read them out um, clearly so that all parents hear it, and then I will try to answer it to the best of your satisfaction. Now, if you've joined in late or if you can't think of something now, but it comes to you later, please feel free to write to um, your contact from Clay or to info at clayschools.com and we'll get back to you at the earliest. Over to you, Divya. Thank you, AK. That was a very informative session. I'm sure you've answered many of the questions of our parents, but we still have a few of them lined up. Sure. Uh, first of all, I see a lot of excited parents waiting to send their children uh, back to school. So that's like really good to hear. Um, there are a couple of questions, so I will uh, ask them one by one and you can then answer them. A uh, lot of parents want to know when the centers will reopen and specifically our Karnataka centers and Gurgaon centers. And if we have a date so far. Okay. Um, we do I have a date so far? Unfortunately, I do not have a date so far. I can only tell you what um, I have been hearing from the education ministry circles in both these places. Um, Gurgaon um, looks like might open up shortly after the Bawali. Karnataka, I know for a fact, is opening up grade one and above after the Bawali. Probably the kindergarten and the pre-K sections would open shortly after that, but within the month of November. Um, of course, we'll hear from the governmental agencies and they'll probably issue a circular that clearly states when we can open, as was the case in Telangana and in uh, Tamil Nadu as well. Okay, um, we have another question. Um, so in the event that our center might shut down for 14 days, a um, lot of parents want to know if we will start a new online batch for that particular center. Yes, um, the idea would be that uh, the child doesn't miss out on, on any part of the education. So if we have to start a new batch, we will. If uh, the existing batches can be accommodated with uh, children, that is fine also. So I think we are very flexible about the fact 
uh, that how we'll accommodate them, but the promise is that we will accommodate them and to your convenience as well, as far as possible. Um, for infants and small toddlers, uh, parents want to know how we will kind of enforce physical distancing considering they're very small. Yeah, it's it's difficult. Uh, let, let's be frank about it. Even with junior toddlers or senior toddlers, we're talking about very young children here who probably would be terribly excited to come back to school, see their friends, meet new friends, come to a place where they can, you know, learn, play, meet their teachers, physical distancing at, you know, so what we'll do is we'll confine them to certain areas. So the use of common areas would be minimized so that two classes don't intermingle as far as possible. Within the class, we'll try to keep the sessions as much as possible. We'll try not to have everybody in the lunchroom at the same time, not have everybody in the activity rooms at the same time, so that we can find them to the areas where they belong. Now, in case of infants, that's how it's been already. I mean, even those days where we were running the school before the pandemic, the infants were always kept in a separate section because, you know, um, you could have toddlers running all over the place and they could injure the infants in that sense. So we try to keep them separate. Um, physical distancing is possible only to the extent of when we have our classes. Yes, we will try to seat them at a certain distance. We'll keep the population at the school to a level where it's manageable within uh, by keeping social distancing. Would it work 100% of the time? Possibly not. Kids will play, kids will touch each other. It will happen. Um, just constant sanitization of their hands of all the knobs, doorknobs, toys, um, you know, books, everything that they touch, that's what we can do to actually make sure that we keep this as safe as possible. I trust that makes some sense. Um, parents are also asking about the teacher-child ratio that we will try and maintain in our classes. See, we uh, will try to stick to the ratios we had originally. We do not want too many teachers or too many caregivers crowding up there either. Uh, when we say that the children would be at reduced capacity, you'd have enough teachers and caregivers according to that in our child ratio as we have had in the past. Um, we won't increase the number of teachers and caregivers because, again, that would be increasing the number of adults on the premise. We increase risk in that meantime. In fact, it's more risky than increasing the number of children. So we will keep it at a ratio which pretty much sticks to the ratios we had originally uh, and not change that. Okay. Um, we have a parent asking, uh, he's got a 2.5-year-old child who has never been to school before. Is there any prerequisite before joining, I mean, putting the child in school? Are we going to look at some, um, some points that we will follow for that before the child gets home? Yes, and we'll probably take such parents through in great detail in the upcoming seminars. Sir uh, or ma'am, I would request you to please definitely attend that session where we'll talk about how we want to settle your child in. Um, even for those children who haven't been to school in 18 months, it's as good as starting a new. It's not very different. So settling is going to be um, something that will take a bit of time. Uh, the good news is that our teachers and caregivers are very well experienced with um, the settling in process. You'd be very happy to know that a lot of our staff that existed before the pandemic are still with us. Um, so we have the same experience in dealing with settling in process. The difference being this time, we'd probably request the parents not to come in during the settling in process. And obviously the reasons are clear because we don't want to increase the risk, but you're leaving your child in very good hands. And how we plan to do this, how we plan to make the settling in very smooth, please stay tuned for our next webinar on this, where our curriculum folks and the experts on this would talk to you about it. Uh, do not neglect your own well-being as well. We know what kind of tensions you're going through. So there would be our psychologists who would have sessions for you as well to keep your own sanity through this process. I know it's a tough time for all of us. We've got to support each other through it. Um, parents also want to know if they, if they can opt for a hybrid model of learning while the child settles down in school. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> we will offer a hybrid model where the child can engage with online and in school premises till the child reaches a level of comfort to come back and details of which will come to you shortly before your center opens uh, it would definitely be available for all children in our system okay uh, we have a parent who's um, 
uh, asking so if uh, her child has a cold for a one day is a pre is a covid test mandatory to come back to um, the center if your child has had flu like symptoms and colds typically tend to last for more than a day they tend to last 3 4 days sometimes we would recommend that you come back with a covid negative certificate um, if for nothing else, for the peace of mind of the other parents and children who also sent their children to the center, right? Um, so we would kindly request all to cooperate on this particular aspect so that when our child comes back to school, they're all very sure that the child is safe and therefore the other children are safe as well. Okay. Uh, while the child is settling down, a parent wants to know if uh, they can send the products that the child is comfortable, like their blanket or their toy, till the child settles down, or are we insisting on only products that have been sanitized by kids? Uh, <clears throat> do remember, Devia, that we could sanitize the product as well, because toys especially can be sanitized by us, but do remember that we have a complete selection of toys that your child can enjoy. If there are requirements like that, which you may have on a case to case basis, please talk to us before the child comes back and we'll try our best to, you know, facilitate things so that the child um, settles in more easily. Um, I think on a case to case basis, our center directors and our curriculum folks would be able to help with that. Okay. Um, we have a lot of parents asking if our other programs like our learn at home, learn at home program and care at home program would still continue in spite of our centers reopening. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They will continue till the time you need us to continue them. Um, it's, it's very simple. Till you tell us that you need them, we will be happy to continue them. The day you tell us we are all back to school, we, we don't think we need your online anymore, we'll stop online. Um, a parent also wants to know that the day the child joins the center, is it mandatory for an RTPC negative test for the, for the child? Not if the temperature reading is normal and you've recorded seven days of temperatures in beforehand. No, we don't need an RT-PCR then. <clears throat> if your child has been symptom free for seven days, if all in the family are symptom free for seven days, we're not insisting on an RT-PCR certificate to attend school the first day. That only happens if your child develops symptoms. So if you do find that your child has any symptoms or a temperature, we request you to please keep the child at home till she or he recovers completely. Okay, I'll just go through all the questions once again. I think we are done with most of them. Um, will we be using air conditioners in our centers, considering it may be difficult during this time? Yes, um, that is a million dollar question, isn't it? To use or not to use, that is the question. Um, in centers and in cities where it can be avoided, we'll try to avoid that. But in some cities, we may have to use it. We'll make sure that before the center opens, the filters are cleaned out. Um, the air filters and the air conditioning systems are cleaned out. You know, some of our centers happen to be, for instance, our centers in Mumbai. <clears throat> some of them could be inside a tower, in which case, you know, for the child to stay there without air conditioning could be very difficult. Um, so we'll... Again, look at the premises. See, Bangalore may not have as much of a problem as does um, some other place that's more hot or more humid. Um, so even if we are to use the air conditioning, I assure you it would be completely serviced before we turn it on, especially since we haven't used it for this long. Um, it would completely depend on the comforts because in some areas, I suspect you wouldn't be able to sit there without an air conditioning system on. Uh, the child wouldn't be able to. We have a parent asking about the school timings and if it will be the same as when we were operating from our centers. Yes, the idea would be that you are able to conveniently go back to work and therefore we will operate our schools for the same times as in we'll have our daycare services open for the whole day. Uh, schooling by itself would follow the first half of the day as we used to have, although in some states like Tamil Nadu schooling is still not started. When we started, it will be the same duration as it was in the past. Uh, but the center would be available to you uh, throughout the day. Okay. I think that's about it, AK. All right. Shall we give it a second, maybe 30 seconds to see if somebody else turns up with a question? Perhaps. Yep.
There's a question on the health and safety protocols for infants in, in particular, and if we have any protocols in place for infants. Only that the, uh, they are going to be isolated in a sense from the rest of the school, kept in premises um, inside a classroom where they don't interact much with the more senior children. Um, they would be surrounded by people who've been vaccinated twice. Um, the, obviously, the cleaning routines are pretty much the same across the school, but uh, you know, in case of the infant room, we'd probably increase the frequency of cleaning or disinfecting the knobs or the doors or uh, the floors, especially because they crawl on them. Um, so I think that is what we plan to do with the infants, keep them surrounded by people who are vaccinated in that sense. So, you know, not to let them come in contact with anybody else from within the system, because their immunity, um, you know, is more important at that stage. Here's another question. Uh, once vaccines for children are, are available, will it be mandatory for all children to take it before coming to play? It would be highly recommended. We can't mandate it. We, the government does not mandate it. Uh, if the vaccine for children is deemed safe and if the government rolls it out, um, uh, and I'm sure the government does this after a lot of thought, um, especially when it comes to children. Um, so if the government thinks that it is safe to roll out, we would highly recommend that you consider taking the vaccine for your child because uh, it, it improves your child's um, immunity in the process. Um, so if there are specific reasons why you may not want your child to be vaccinated, please talk to us. And I promise we won't give you a sales talk to make you vaccinated, but we'll at least try to understand your perspective of where it's coming from. But is it we going to be mandatory? No. The, the reason I say that is even today we are taking in children who are not vaccinated. True. We have a lot of questions on the opening of centers for Maharashtra uh, in particular. So. Maharashtra is the one state that has resolutely refused to answer any questions from me or from any of our um, preschool fraternity about when they plan to open. Um, they're playing it very carefully. I suspect they want to see how the Diwali Dashera holidays go off. And if there is no spike, I'm sure they'll open. I believe they've opened cinema halls now um, in Maharashtra. So that's a step which they're taking to say that things are normalizing um, in Maharashtra. So I anticipate it should be in line with what we're talking about in Karnataka or in NCR. It shouldn't be too different, at least by the signs. But at least the Karnataka and the NCR, uh, you know, boards of education have conveyed to us that they plan to open it. We haven't had such a discussion with the Maharashtra, you know, the officers. I suspect it won't be as long if, if after the valley there's no spike in cases, things should open. And let me take this opportunity to narrate a short conversation I had with um, an associate from UK. Uh, this was a couple of days ago, and uh, she's very closely associated with preschools and daycares in UK. The cases in UK are high. They haven't gone back to zero. In fact, they're, um, what do you call that? That rate at which you infect other people, Divya, there's a word for it. I forget, it's, it's just slipped out of my mind. How many people can you infect? That number needs to be less than one, they say. So in London, for example, the cases are high. It's another thing that they're not very seriously high. As in, it's not like people are running for oxygen or running for hospital beds because they've been vaccinated. The onset of symptoms has been very mild. School carries on as usual. In fact, over there, the teachers don't wear masks. The caregivers don't wear masks. Um, and school has gone on. Despite the fact that cases have gone up, the schools continue to operate there, right? So in our country, I think we are all waiting to see how the Diwali holidays go. I think that's the acid test. If three yeah, weeks yeah. after the Diwali holidays, things look okay, then I think we passed the worst. Okay, um, one more question, AK. Um, after a child has been tested positive and the center is closed for five days, will all children need to get a negative RT-PCR test before joining? No, the no. only if you have symptoms. Uh, if you and it's it's exactly the same as it is for adults. I mean, if you've come in contact with a potentially infected person or an infected person, you're observing quarantine for a certain period of time. If you don't develop symptoms within that time, you don't need an RT-PCR test. 
So if the child is normal, you don't need to do an RT-PCR test. Only if the child develops symptoms do we suggest you do do an RT-PCR test. Um, can nursing mothers continue to come to the daycare center and will there be a, spe a separate space allocated for them? Yes, there will be. For nursing mothers, we will have a separate space. Okay, that's about it. Um, we can uh, we leave parents with another video. Um, so thank you for all the answering all the questions and for the lovely informative session. Uh, we'll be having similar such uh, back to series uh, back to school uh, webinars over the next couple of weeks. Uh, for those of you who have missed this session, a recording will be available and shared with all of you shortly. Thank you, AK. Thank you, thank you, Devi. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Hello, parents. Welcome to Clay Preschools and Daycare. I am Aishwarya Raj, one of the center directors at Clay. Your child's safety has always been our number one priority. And I am here today to tell you about the enhanced health and safety protocols at our centers in response to COVID-19. We have put in place a comprehensive, three-pronged approach to health and safety, covering center and staff hygiene, child safety, and protocols to be followed by parents. Our measures begin well before we reopen. We will undertake the fumigation of the entire center along with deep cleaning and sanitization. We will start recording the temperature of the staff seven days before reopening and we will expect you to do the same by recording your temperature and that of the child on the Clay Community app. Once we reopen and children start coming into the centers, the first step will be to check the temperature of anyone who is entering. Parents and staff will be required to fill in a self-declaration form sharing information of their symptoms and travel history. The child will then be escorted into their classroom by designated staff. Every center will have a safety officer who will look into the safety aspects of the center. As you can see, physical distancing will be followed with markers inside the classrooms, staggered meal times and activity times. Our staff are trained to ensure 100% compliance of all initiatives. All staff will wear protective care and support staff will wear freshly washed aprons. The kitchen, housekeeping and security staff will wear caps and gloves. Regular sanitization has always been a part of the staff routine at Clay and they will continue to do so. The toys and frequently accessed areas will be sanitized regularly. The children will be trained to wash their hands. At the end of the day, you can pick up your child from the lobby. We will look forward to your support to record the temperature of your child every evening at 7 p.m. and record the same in the Clay Community app. In case any individual, staff or anyone from the child's family shows symptoms or is suspected of being COVID positive, we have chalked out response mechanism to ensure that our children, your families and our staff are safe. Each protocol is in line with guidelines issued by CDC, guidance from the big international schools that have already reopened and feedback from you, our parents. This is to ensure a safe, happy and healthy environment for the little ones, their families and our staff. We have been away from our children too long and we are preparing to come back stronger and pack in all the love and care they deserve. Come, let's reopen happiness. 
Let's reopen my clay.